Hello, and welcome to a special edition of Up Close on METV. I'm Charles Clapsaddle, Station Manager for Manatee Educational Television. And on this special edition, we're very proud to have with us a woman who's made a great difference over the last five years in our community, Mary Beth Phillips, the CEO of Meals on Wheels Plus of Manatee County. Mary Beth, what a pleasure it is to Thank have you, you here. Thank you. And as I mentioned, you know, over the last five years as the CEO of Meals and Wheels Plus, through your leadership, your vision, and the initiatives that you've created, Meals and Wheels Plus is such a vital part of our community. Thank you so much. You know, I can't take all the credit. We have such an amazing team of staff and volunteers that make it happen every day, but thank you so much. Well, you know, Meals and Wheels does have a lot of volunteers, and we're mm -hmm. going to talk a little bit about that, and you have a wonderful staff. Mm -hmm. But Meals on Wheels Plus encompasses so much, and I don't think people really realize the full extent of what the services and resources that Meals on Wheels Plus has. It's this large umbrella. Tell us about that. I love to describe it as that giant umbrella um, hosting all of these programs which include the food bank of Manatee, uh, the adult day center. We are the only licensed adult day center in Manatee County. We are the Feeding America food bank of Manatee yeah. County. We have a transportation program, and of course we have our home delivered meal program, which is critical in uh, Manatee County. Right, yes. And we also operate the enrichment center at Renaissance on 9th. It, you know, it, each one of these, as a standalone would be a significant contribution to this community. But combined all of these efforts and under one umbrella organization uh, and what, under your leadership, it's, it's a remarkable thing. And I must point out that the food bank, which is a critical part of this community yes. uh, because it, it, it filters all the donations to all these other pantries in and around the, co the county is very significant and Cindy your food bank manager mm -hmm. is a remarkable woman she is she has such passion um, to feed Manatee County and uh, she too has a great staff but we deal with about hundred and fifteen agencies right. and pantries in Manatee County who in turn get food and necessities to the individuals in our county who need um, nutrition I mean basically we still are seeing residual from the recession and people who are back at work, they still are, you know, do I put gas in the car or do I pay the electric bill or do I go and buy food, but maybe I need to not right. buy the food and go right. to a pantry. And that's what we're seeing. And, and, you know, over the years that, you know, we've been you know, working with you on a variety of things, we, we've done several things where the food bank has been almost bare because the need there is so great. And, and we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about that, about the food bank and how way people can donate. But, you know, summer is, is almost here, and there's a need for summer food bank supplies as well. That is very true. So what happens in the summer? We have so many of our residents who are not here, and people are just not of that um, charitable mindset, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, we're past the holidays, sure. we're on vacation, um, and a lot of people go up north. So we don't have the steady donations right. of food and um, resources. Um, but at the same time, you have hundreds, thousands of children who otherwise get food during the school day. Yes. Free or reduced breakfast. I right. mean, I believe 55% of our school age children get free or reduced breakfast. That doesn't happen in the summer when they're not mm. in school. So we do have a big effort to um, combat summer hunger 
and our SAC Summer Hunger Campaign has just started. And, and let's talk a little <coughs> bit about that because sure. you know that's a, that's a really great program. And you're absolutely you know, correct in, in 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 your statement that because of free and reduced lunches during the school year, kids are getting nutritious meals both at a breakfast and a lunch. But when summer rolls around and there's no school, even though there are efforts, you know, by other organizations, the food bank of Manatee is is you know critical to be able to provide you know that relief that is true and so what we see is an increase in need over the summer mm -hmm. yet we see a decrease so it's like the supply and demand equation right. and um, that's where we really need to get the message out and really you know ask our community to rally and help us with getting the shelves stocked at right. the food bank uh, we also have, um, this is our third year of getting weekend bags of food also mm -hmm. out to some of these children. So the Manatee Schools has a uh, bus that goes around right. and brings um, a hot lunch and we follow the bus to certain si uh, sites in the summer and, dr and give the children a weekend bag. How great is two, that? Two dinners, two lunches, two breakfasts, some milk. Wow and they uh, get to uh, have some nutrition over the weekend. That's Those excellent. children are not able to be reached when they're not in school. Exactly. So our goal this year is to distribute 10,000 bags. And, and I think that's you know, a remarkable thing. It shows you know, the, the, not only the great need, but it also shows you know, the mission of Meals on Wheels Plus is inclusive, it's year round, and it's something that you know, really contributes greatly to everyone. And, and I have to say, when we were talking about the food bank, we've seen some of the pantry people come to the food bank, uh, you know, pick up their supplies on a, on a regular basis, and how thankful and how uh, important it is for the food bank to be there for these pantries so they can serve their constituents. That's true. Um, you know, they're really, most of them are volunteers, many of them are at churches, mm -hmm. and um, you know, they just they just recognize the need, and um, they work with our team at the food bank, and um, they get the food out to the individuals who need it. You know, the other uh, couple of other programs related to the food bank is um, there are times where, uh, let's say, the sheriff sheriff might go into a home for some incident, and they'll see that there's children there, and yet there's no food in the home. Right. They'll come to us as one of our agencies and say, you know, there's a family of five, right. and there's no food there. We'll do an emergency box of food. So we have an emergency family food uh, program. And similar to that, we have a program where every week an agency will send us a fax about a, um, a client or a member of that church who has a, a baby, an infant. Right. Now, if you can't pay f for food for yourself you or your, for your family, you certainly can't pay for diapers or everything Formula. related to formula. It's very expensive. So we provide an emergency bag of diapers, wipe, formula, for that child up to age two every single week. That, I mean, it's a remarkable combination of, of, and level of effort. You know, and it's not just, you know, you're know, providing a hot meal. It's that ongoing, sustainable, you know, effort that is being made at all levels for, you know, newborns, right. Right. Uh, through school age, and, you know, through your home delivered meals, of course. Yeah, so what I've been saying as I travel and talk about this um, need to get this word out to the community, we are feeding Manatee County. Right. We are taking care of babies who need formula to seniors who are homebound, isolated, and right. you know it's just that one meal that they get during the day. And, and you know, it, 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 if, I, if I may, you know, the, the the efforts that are being made, you know, over the summer for school age kids is, is remarkable because no one wants to see any child go hungry. But for newborns and new parents who have the, it's just as important to have a resource that's going to be available, you know, for diapers or formulas for for those uh, uh, critical needs so they can have a healthy, happy life. But you know, I, I want to take a moment here, if I may. You know, this is, this is very important, I think, because of the fact that you rely upon Manatee County and its generosity for a great deal of support. And you know, Manatee County is a very generous community. It's full of good people who recognize needs and want to give back. Yes. 
you know, and I just want to take a moment right now to talk about, you know, how can people help? How can people who are listening to this program or know the good work that you're doing each and every day, how can they donate? How can they contribute? How can they, you know, help you uh, in your challenges? So many ways. Great question. <laughs> uh, there's so many ways. Uh, first, uh, I would say always need volunteers. Mm -hmm. So we always need volunteers. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to talk about that too we are. as far as the, the summer for home delivered meals. Volunteering time to help us sort, to help us package those weekend bags of food, oh, yeah. that's, a, that's a critical need. The biggest need we have, of course, is getting the food on the shelves during the summer. And um, you know, companies can can promote a food collection drive. Sure. A, a recent company I saw did a peanut butter drive. You know, Great. a staple like peanut butter or, or cereal drive. I mean, those things they cost Are a staples. lot of money. They're and, staples, though. and they're so necessary to uh, to get out. Um, so Food drives, food collections, mm -hmm. um, and then of course any type of funding is Doing. always appreciated because we have to buy certain things like formula, right. which is very expensive. So, and sometimes you know if people donate to you can buy in bulk, which makes it a lot easier, exactly. you know, for quantity. Yes. So we're going to put the phone number and the website up for Meals and Wheels Plus on the screen, and you know if people want to find out more information or talk to someone and how they can either volunteer or contribute or see how they can help. They can go to your website, they can go to the phone number and see how best they can uh, help you. Yes, and in addition to that, I would say I'm always open and welcome anyone who would like to come and take a tour of our facility. And, and having seen your facility, mm -hmm. it, it's quite the tour, and I would encourage people to do that mm -hmm. because they can see the, the breadth of what you accomplish every day, but also see that energy and dedication that you and right. your staff bring, bring to Meals on Wheels That's Plus. very true. But you know, we're talking about businesses for now. If a, a, a business can put a barrel you know, in in their sure. thing. People can bring things from home. Sure. You'll drop off the barrel. Yes. And you'll pick it up. And we'll pick it up. And so. I think that's great. And people mm -hmm. can bring in food. They can you know mm -hmm. maybe they when they go to to the supermarket they'll buy you know three cans of beans and they only need one and mm -hmm. they can contribute the rest and that mm -hmm. food barrel kind of can fill up pretty quickly. It, it can and it means so much to us. I mean we've seen companies uh, like last summer Blaylock Walters did a big food drive and they actually designed uh, a little house and so <laughs> you know they can have fun with it mm -hmm. and have prizes and really you know get some engagement around um, the staff. Their and, and it's so. business large and small too. I mean you don't have to be sure. a large Large business, sure. or for, you, I mean, you can be a small business mm -hmm. and put a food barrel in there, and over a period of you know a few months, collect things that you can contribute to the food bank. Yes, another uh, opportunity for companies is we've had a number of companies that have done our care and share, mm -hmm. and basically what they do is give us a donation to take care of the volunteers and the purchasing of food, and they bring their staff instead of the pantry having their staff, oh. and they actually assemble boxes of food <coughs> so when people come to um, obtain their food for the week, it's, it's, it's done by a group of volunteers. And it is so great. rewarding to the employees. They absolutely oh, really get so much out of it and feel so good about it. And I think that's a wonderful thing. I mean, we, over the years we've participated where you've had the stuff the bus uh, thing, yeah. mm -hmm. which is a remarkable achievement. You get, you know, the stores participating, mm -hmm. you've got organizations participating. Personally, I like when all the sports teams come and they unload the buses. You know, I got all these young guys the throwing teams. these things, and it's terrific. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful thing, and mm -hmm. it shows again that generosity of spirit. And and I think if people have the opportunity to just volunteer for maybe a day or a week, just to see the return on their investment of time and effort, mm -hmm. I, I think they'll be really pleasantly surprised. I think so too. And you mentioned Stuff the Bus. Um, and that brings to mind that as the Feeding America Food Bank mm -hmm. of Manatee County, we are able to go out to every Publix, every retail store, right. and pick up food that they have to take off the shelf, but is still perfectly fine right. 
to get out to the people in our community who, who, are, the need, most need. who, are, who are needy. So uh, the great news is the retail stores get a tax write-off for mm -hmm. what we pick up, and we get to use that good um, nutrition to get out to the um, people who need it. And, and it's a great thing, you know, bus after bus after bus come mm -hmm. from all over the county and do that. But you know, that takes care of a certain period of time. Yes. And as you mentioned, you know, the food bank is in need year round. There is not a period yes. of time where you know, we're fine, we don't need anything. It's a year round need, it's a year round requirement you know, yes. to help give back. Hunger is every day. It's every day. And it's every week, and it's every month, and it's all year long for some people in Manatee County. And that is what we are trying to take care of. Feed Manatee County. And, and Mary Beth, again, you know, I'll point out, you know, through your leadership and vision and initiatives that you've done, uh, the food bank is really a, a, such a critical part of this community. So, so critical. And, and one of the, one of the truly critical things that you continue to do is the home delivered meals. And, and I want to take a few minutes to talk about this. Sure. Because people think about, when they think about Meals on Wheels, they think about what the home delivered meals are. It's nutritious meal every day, home delivered uh, to those elderly and infirm in our community. But it's really much more than that. It's a, it's a social interaction mm -hmm. between your volunteers and the mission that you do and that individual that's in that home might, who might be the only person that they see as their Meals on Wheels driver. That is so true. So Meals on Wheels Plus was started in 1972 just for that reason, to get a hot meal out to the homebound in Manatee County. And uh, through the years, as we talked about, we've adopted other programs, but Meals on Wheels is so well-branded. I mean, if I had a penny every time someone said, oh, my mother delivered Meals on Wheels, or my father got Meals on Wheels in yeah. Ohio, or someplace else, it's so well-branded and so well-recognized. It is. And so for us, in Manatee County, we have um, over a thousand clients um, at different times throughout the year that get a home delivered meal. And the volunteers who bring that meal, I mean, I would challenge anyone that it is not more rewarding and mm -hmm. beneficial to the volunteer than it is to the client. But, it, but it, they also serve such a critical uh, role because, as you mentioned, it's not just handing somebody a hot meal. Right. It is also that face. It's the eyes checking on that individual to How make are you sure. doing? How are you feeling? Yes. You know? Yes. You know, what, what are you looking forward to do today? Yes. It, and, and over the years, we've had the opportunity to go with you on, mm -hmm. on several occasions. Recently, mm -hmm. we went some with uh, elected officials sure. as they delivered meal. Mm -hmm. And you know, even though they were there just temporarily doing this, you could tell all the people that, that, that we accompanied how much it meant to them to deliver, to hand them a meal and get that thanks and recognition uh, for just taking the time to do that. Mm -hmm. it, it's significant. It is. And you know, I have to say that um, they, they serve such a critical role for us, those volunteers, because if, if you don't answer the door, we yeah. are checking on you. Yeah. There, are, there are occasions where we're the ones that find somebody has fallen, somebody right. needs medical attention, um, somebody uh, you know, even has passed away. I mean, sure. but, but we are the ones checking on them every day. You're that and, conduit. You're that yes. conduit between mm -hmm. all those people who, you know, because of their illness or their age, you mm -hmm. know, are, 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 are kind of in the shadows. That's true. And they're just, um, you know, they're home alone. So, um, you know, we have seen a 40% increase in mm -hmm. the last five years, actually, of the demand for home delivered meals. Now, um, a lot of those clients uh, can't afford the meals, and so we do get some funding through the federal government, and we do have some clients that come in through the county um, community care for the elderly. The funding levels really have not increased, but yet our our need, need your need, need has, has increased. A forty percent increase in, in in five years without the the the, the equal in, influx in funding, you mm -hmm. know, is putting you at a disadvantage. Absolutely, and in fact, in two thousand thirteen, with sequestration of the federal government, we lost money mm. and close to a hundred thousand dollars, and we never got that. We never got back to those levels. Mm. Yet our demand 
has gone exponentially up to 40%. So we, the organization, has had to do fundraisers and you know appeals to the community to try to raise the funds to make up that difference. Because you still, the need is going to be there and the need is yes. increasing. And, you, and, and I, would, I would ask you, you know, to talk a little bit, if you could, Mary Beth, mm -hmm. because of this, because of the fact that the need is increasing and funding is, you know, is, is less or you know, at, at, a, at, at same levels, what are you going to have to do? How are these policies going to have to change so one can continue the efforts that you have and still reach as many people as, as you possibly could? So in 2016, just one example, you know, we recognized that it cost the organization over $370,000 um, to cover the cost of meals hmm. because our policy was always come on in. We, we never wanted a senior to be turned away. And so many other um, counties, cities, communities, they have what's called a wait list. Mm. And we recognize that with the increase in need, as we're seeing, we couldn't keep going mm. on this path. So um, our board of directors in January decided that we would have to refer a client who could not afford the meal to the area agency, which ours is in Tampa, mm -hmm. it's the area agency on aging. Mm -hmm. And they have a whole group of very talented staff members who assess those clients. Mm. And the great news about that new referral policy is that they're able to determine Mrs. Smith has a high priority. Mr. Jones is not as high. Mm. So when there's funding available, mm. uh, we need to take care of you know, the high priority clients first. So that is a change for us this year. We are hoping that it's short lived and that we go back to our policy, mm. but we do need some funding. We just couldn't keep going down that path and in that direction with any organization funds. and I would say Mary Beth any organization that has the, the you know the wider need and the less resources you know there's going to come to a point where what can we do mm -hmm. And yeah. what can't we do? And that, um, you know, the, the means assessment that, you know, the area agency has helped, you know, that's a simple measure, but it doesn't eliminate the constant requirement for people that are reaching out. Yes. So what we're seeing basically is you have the baby boomers who are moving into the space of needing our services, right. including home delivered meals, mm -hmm. primarily. You also have people that are living longer. So that's a big, you know, uh, difference too. People, are, they're not cycling off as they might have done 10, 20 years ago. Um, and then, uh, you know, as we know, we live in this beautiful place uh, called Florida, Manatee County, and people who retired here more more. prior to the recession even, who may have lost their retirement income due to the you know, recession exactly. and what we all went through, you know, they're here and um, they, they need our services. So. And, and, and that um, increase in that poverty level, you know, mm -hmm. is increasing. And there's a great deal of people and as, you know, it, it is evidenced by the fact of the number of free and reduced lunches that sure. the district has. Mm -hmm. There are a number of people that are ill and infirm. Mm -hmm. um, without savings, without any kind right. of uh, ongoing fixed income people who have... And maybe not, not their fault. I mean... It, it, and, you know, and the, the, it doesn't really matter because mm -hmm. you, you're there, you're there to mm -hmm. serve a need, and that need is to eliminate hunger. Um, you know, and, and it, it appalls me to think that there's going to be some little old lady or little old man who are sitting who won't be able to get a meal because the requirement is different for them. They, they may not be on that priority as someone who might be older or sicker than them. Mm -hmm. So, and it's a tough position to put you in because you want to serve everyone, everyone possible. Yes. Which brings me, you know, to the elderly in Manatee. I mean, we have a wonderful elderly population here. Mm -hmm. You know, very active. You know, we would. I would suggest anybody go to Renaissance on Ninth and see yes, some of the our glass the center. Yes, yeah, so fun. And and, and your adult uh, center, you, you know, games and involvement mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and engagement for people. It's a great service. It's a vital service that that you're provided. But the elderly population in Mantee County 
has a need. There is an ongoing need, both you know, from a, a social, you know, thing mm -hmm. for to mm -hmm. basic food necessities, you know, to to medical care, you know, which is you know something that's e essential as well. However, the point being here is that there has been talk and, and discussions, and as it comes to fruition, as this moves down the road, how is this all going to be funded on a federal level? You know, is this you know one of the criteria that we're looking at that you know certain social programs perhaps have to be cut to look at other programs such as uh, defense or uh, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be? So these are huge issues that are going to affect not just this community, but communities around the country. That's true. And mm -hmm. you know, these are things that, as the the visionary leader that you mm -hmm. are, you're taking a long, hard look at. Well, uh, absolutely, because we know that the need is there in Manatee County, and um, we know that we've already changed our policy prior to you know, the news that came out of the Trump administration that we may be seeing, you know, some changes in the budget. Um, part of what happens with the federal funding is it is based on um, population, unemployment, et cetera, but it takes a few years for right. it to catch up with. Right. And you know how much we have grown. And so we all know um, that the uh, the numbers are are rising, and and they'll continue to rise, and they'll yeah. continue to rise. So um, you know we see it all around us in Manatee County: the growth in real estate, the growth in in people coming here. Mm -hmm. So um, when it takes a few years for the funding to catch up with the right. population in the need, um, that is a challenge. The additional challenge of cutting the budget. Um, will, you know, make our community have to rally together to make sure um, we get these meals out to people who need it. The, the, the opposite side, if we don't get help, is going to be an increased cost in medical needs and other um, issues that will affect our community. So it is incumbent upon all of us to say, you know, we need to take care of this okay. and we need to help and make sure that people get that home delivered meal. And you know, you're very eloquent, you know, Mary Beth, and you know, your passion and dedication to Meals on Wheels Plus is, is just so evident. And I would suggest to you that, you know, we need to look long and hard at those, the most vulnerable, in our population yes. and see how best we can help them. You know, Meals and Wheels, critical part of this community, critical part of many communities throughout the country. But, you know, we have to look long and hard and see, you know, if these are the facts that are coming, how best can we solve this? And I would say, you know, throughout the people here in Manatee County, you should encourage, I would encourage you to go take a look at Meals on Wheels Plus because it, not only does the organization serve each and every facet of this community from that uh, summer feeding for, for mm -hmm. young people, you know, to the most vulnerable in our population. and. Um, I would say whatever challenge is ahead of you, Mary Beth, you're going to meet it, you know, head on, and you're going to be able to solve it to the best. But we do need um, support from this community. Yes, yes, we absolutely do. And um, funding is critical. You know, there is um, one other component about home-delivered meals that people think you have to be indigent and you have to be poor. And while that is a substantial component of mm -hmm. our client base, we also have so many clients who are able to pay for the meal. And so I would love to get that message out too. If you good. have a loved one who needs a meal and needs that check-in every day, sure. and you can pay for it, please call us, pick up the phone. We'll make sure they get that meal tomorrow. Because as you know, so many <laughs> people are retired here. Yeah. Their families are north in another state. Absolutely. And we are those eyes and ears. So um, we are not, um, we are certainly accepting new clients if they can afford the meal. And then for clients who can't, our funding is spoken for in 2017, but we hope that um, additional avenues of funding will come up and we can take care of the people that might be waiting for a meal. Well, as you talked about, the umbrella 
Yes. That the big umbrella, mm -hmm. uh, that which is Meals on Wheels Plus, encompasses so many things. The food bank, summer, uh, you know, feeding for kids mm -hmm. who are mm -hmm. at risk, you know, home delivered meals, your enrichment center, your adult daycare place. These are all the great things that Meals on Wheels continues to do each and every day. And I want people to pick up the phone or go to your website and find out how they can help, whether as an individual, whether as a business, whether as a couple perhaps, saying, oh, well, maybe Maybe we can do something because they did something for our mm -hmm. mother or our right. father at one right. time and we want to give back or even maybe they just want to volunteer and you know their time and their effort to do so. There's so much that can be done but I would say again Mary Beth that under your leadership under the vision that you've brought to Meals on Wheels Plus over the last five years and hopefully for another you know, five, ten, fifteen, who knows but at least you know, twenty. At yeah. least twenty years <laughs> we hope, we hope. You know Meals on Wheels can continue to be that critical part of this community and, and you know the passion and dedication and, and level of commitment that you bring uh, is is beyond thank measure. You, thank you. I have to say we have a wonderful board of directors and and really we have a tremendous staff so I feel very fortunate to be here in the driver's seat but I couldn't do it without them so thank you so much for those kind words. And, and they should be very thankful for you thank as you. well. So if you have any questions or comments that you want to make about Meals on Wheels, I would encourage you to pick up the phone or go to the website and find out how you can help as a business, as an individual, or your organization. Maybe you belong to a service organization like Kiwanis or Rotary and see how best you can help. The food bank, the, their, their other facilities are really important for you know, the continued good health of our community. And Meals on Wheels, home delivered Meals on Wheels is such an important part to so many people. See how you can help. I want to thank Mary Beth for joining us today. Oh, thank you, She's Charles. Such a, thank such you a so wonderful much. part thank of you. this community. And I want to thank you for joining us on this special edition of Up Close on METV.